UFC 230 week here in New York City. Madison Square Garden, November 3rd, Saturday night. Derek Lewis fighting for the heavyweight champion uh, against our next guest. The champ is here. Let me just stand up. Let me just pay him risk. Wow. Look at this man. My God. The double t Can, like, I mean, I don't know. Is that allowed? Yes. My God. Look at this guy, Josh, in the house. Rosendo in the house. I might have to beat you up, Rosendo, staring at me over there with that side. You know eye. they say, don't touch Ariel. <laughs> they just said, don't. Rosendo giving me the side eye over there. Damn. All right. I just need to set, let me set the baseline. Okay. Look at you. Let me look at this. Look at this. Oh, nice. Hey. These are, are these the real ones? Oh, yeah. Wow. I, have you ever touched one? I've never touched one. No. Here, you can pick it up. Is it very heavy? Oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, right? The that real is really deal. heavy. Hey, wow. listen. You just walk around this thing like it's nothing. I don't. Josh does, actually. Okay. <laughs> One time, D when DJ wow. broke the... Listen to this story. When okay. Demetrius Johnson, who, by the way, congratulations, yeah, DJ. Yeah. I want to ask you about uh, that. Broke the record. Yeah. Josh had to carry 10 of these oh my on God. his media <laughs> tour in a bag. PR Josh. PR Josh. He's strong, dude. Best, look, best in the UFC, You have in my no opinion. idea how strong Josh is. Yeah. It's amazing he's so strong. But I just want to set the baseline. Can you just sit back? You're a TV pro. You're talking like past the mic over there. I just want to set the baseline real quick. Uh, Tyler Minton. Yes. Oh, and he's, in the, he's yes. been here for two hours because <laughs> he's, he's been so waiting nervous. outside. Yes. Let me put this here. So I, I told to... him, yeah. no pressure, Tyler, but this interview, this one interview yes. could dictate your future. Your kid's future, your grandkid's future. This is big. No pressure. How do you feel about your nutritionist he's getting so a spot nervous. on the show? Ah, he's a good guy, man. He deserves it. Yeah? He deserves it. Okay, yeah, but you Tyler have a whole team of nutritionists, right? I do. You've got Tyler, like eight guys working Ian for you. Ian Larios. It all started with the, the man, the living legend, Daniel Leaf. Daniel Leaf. He was the first George guy. George Lockhart. George Lockhart. But Daniel Leaf was the first guy from Lockhart and Leaf, I think, to be on the show. That's when right. He started, when he started right. working my camp. John Cavanaugh us. heard the interview yep. and hired him to work with mm -hmm. Connor. John, I changed that whole company's. Changed the whole future. Yes. Where's my stocks? Yeah, Where are my stocks where's my in the piece of the leaf There's a lot to talk to you about yeah, right now because I'm staring man. at you. I'm it's actually kind of weird to look into your eyes. Why? Because I talked to you on the phone and whatnot, but like face to face, it's different. It's different. It's almost like it's almost like when you talk to somebody like all right when you're like 13, right? And you start yeah. dating a girl. Yes, yes, yes. Then so when it's time <laughs> to meet her, you kind of chicken out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm feeling that right now. Uh, how's the mic? Is it okay? Are you uncomfortable? I think. This whole setup is yep. tremendous. Stop it. I even saw Rick in the back. Yes. I said, hey, this, this Rick is on, Rick is on vacation. I don't oh, know who I'm you're sorry, talking to. Sorry, the other guy. I said the other guy. Sandu? Sandu. Yeah, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. hey, it looks good on you. It looks, yeah. I said you upgraded, huh? <laughs> what Sandu? about you all? They put you all the way down oh, there. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Who did that? The people who set up the whole thing. They Ariel, put you all the I way. I need this one, Ariel. That's my Gina? spot. That is yeah, up here somewhere. One, like, one of these would have been nice. They put you all the way bottom. I told them that was a mistake. They need to take it off. But after just dissing Sandu like that, then yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I should them, be Rick. on the bottom. Uh, I would say to you, welcome to ESPN, the ABC studios. But in actuality, you have been here before. In this building? Yes. Kelly and Ryan. Kelly and Ryan, yes. That, that was that was whack. That, that was, was awesome. whack. You snuck in, back door. You went on Kelly and Ryan. You didn't even tell me in the same building where we Listen, do our show. Man, it was crazy. That was whack. You it went was big crazy time on us. because Superman was here. What do you mean? There, the real Superman? Yeah, the guy. Oh, wow. Okay, what's his name? Cat Cavill? Cavill? I don't know. The guy, Henry, I think his name is. Henry, uh, and they had so many people out front, you know, that I kind of walked in and I did the whole, you know, yeah, 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 cover yeah, my yeah. head. You paparazzi. Know? Yeah, I did the paparazzi yeah, thing, yeah, even yeah. though nobody actually noticed me. It was just That was great to, to see you on that. I feel like in five years, I've said this to you privately, you're going to be the Michael Strahan. The new Michael Strahan. You're going to be the guy who breaks through, who does. Other, you're, you're still going to you're still going to grace us with your presence. I want to be an MMA too, though. But I do feel you're going like to do non-sports. That's what I, I think. Too. You I want to? Too. Oh yeah. It's a dream. It's a dream. And yesterday, I lived the dream. Yes. I did the opening to the NFL on yeah. Fox Sunday, which was massive for Why me. Why are you talk about Fox here on? It ESPN, was awesome. The future home of the UFC. Hey man, Fox listen, is old news. Listen, man, it doesn't matter. <laughs> listen, it doesn't matter. I appreciate how loyal you are. Fox NFL Sunday is That's still big. a big. It's the big. It's a big deal. Yeah. So, I love. I love your loyalty though. Yes. You're a good guy. I'm loyal right? to who is loyal to me, yes. and I know you can appreciate that. You're loyal you to who signs the checks. Well. <laughs> <laughs> they kicked me out of there so fast. <laughs> These guys. Hey, there was, hey, hey when, when you left, yeah. it was like you're kind of looking back like, is anybody going to say anything? Yeah. And no, I was just in the corner like this, <laughs> like, I just don't want to go with you. you know, so I, was like, I was like, yo, I was like, yo I feel Kenny, bad, but I what's up, Kenny? Like, Kenny, DC, we're like. <laughs> <laughs> go go hang out with Chael hey, yo, over Ariel, there. Ariel, man, hey, yeah. 
It's been real. We're going to miss you, dog. Yeah. Damn. But now we're like, yo, man, could you open the door? Yeah, I know. I know. I get those <laughs> the calls the world you guys. works, huh? It's unbelievable. And you really have been putting your foot at the door trying to not let us in. I'm not letting any of you guys in. <laughs> you think you guys are all getting spots on SportsCenter? That's my territory now, all right? I just want to let you know. Oh, Get ready goodness. for it. You well, hot? I should not have kicked you while you were down. Yeah, it's I okay. You've always had my back. Yeah, you're the guy. You've always had my back. My man. So, DC, anyway, what's wrong with you? Why are you sweating I'm so much? I'm hot because I'm like, it's like this. there are so many lights in here. There are, yeah. This is the big time. It's Where have like, you been today already? I feel like I thought I was getting exclusive, and then I see you all over the place. Complex. Okay. Which I love. Yeah. Um, remember I beat the guy in Connect 4? Yep, yep, yep. Um, Tony. Then I did... Um, uh, I have no Sounds idea. like they all made it's a been great a lot. impression on you. It's been a lot. Listen, at Complex, I was yeah. about to lose in Connect Four. Yeah. You did it again? How many times are you going to do I that? I shouldn't have gave him a rematch because he had me. But So I tipped the belt over into the Connect Four thing. Oh. And it fell, so it was like an DQ. game. So I'm still one to know against It's still weird watching you like move your mouth with the thing there. Why? I don't it's know because I'm just using. So where what is it? it? Like, can you move it? It's, no, I can't move it. It's, a, it's stuck it's in a, there. It's a, uh, uh, Does it give a you bridge. a lisp? This one doesn't give me a lisp. The one I had before gave okay. me a lisp because it was up on my uh, the roof of my mouth and it kind of would like catch on my tongue. And why'd you do that? Getting ready for like those talk shows you were okay. talking about. You know what I'm saying? You gotta, Someone spoke you, to you? Yeah, well, I mean, come on. Strahan's already the black guy with the yeah, gap. Yeah, yeah. Like, Y'all <laughs> room for two of us. They ain't got room for two of us, dog. <laughs> so you're, you're, you're looking ahead. Yeah, you're well, to Saturday night, and then we'll see what happens. Well, I don't mean about that. I just mean about, like, the future. I would love to do stuff like that. Yeah. Like, I would love to, I think, and I hope that I could get good enough at those jobs to do stuff outside of mixed martial arts. Yeah. Because I love sports. What's the dream? I love, I mean, every, I mean, anything. Anything in the morning would be great. You That'd like be it? awesome. You want to yeah. wake up that early? I'd get up in the morning. Really? That's, I, I, I mean, I'd, I'd move anywhere to get a job like that and i love california like a morning show like a morning show new york yeah, it'd be awesome you'd come to new york today show something like that of course the morning america all day really all day long yeah one thousand percent who wouldn't yeah you would do it I, it's early though but would you do it of course <laughs> see that's the dream so why are you asking me like well, i, I, I don't, you don't know the you, answer you're making a lot of money in your but sport for you're you, yeah like for you you're here you know you kind of got the inside track on that no but i'm just saying you do work for espn this is the dream <laughs> this is the dream Big time. You mentioned WWE. Yes, I did. That's got to be a dream. That's a big. That's a big dream. Is that? I'm happen? a lucky guy, to where I'm experiencing and getting a lot of opportunity. And who reached out to who on that one? They reached out to me. Wow. Yeah, they reached out to me. It's good. And where does it stand? It's on. It right now. It's on. It's it's on the back burner because I have to get through Saturday. But we'll see what happens after uh, this weekend. This Saturday or the career. Saturday. I, have to, I mean, I could you, you be an active UFC fighter and work for them? Well, I'm not talking about like me starting this right now, but to go uh, and see if it okay. works. Of course, like all these opportunities, you can't put on the back burner for too long. Sure. You gotta, you gotta kind of see uh, how everything goes. Okay, and what it, would they want you to wrestle? No. Okay, no just wrestling. just talking. Just kind of doing stuff like that. I mean, they've got that big deal now with uh with Fox. So yeah. Maybe I'll do something like a UFC tonight or something over there. I don't know. I don't know what it would entail. I just know that. I have opportunity. You should have gone to the pay-per-view last night. Long Island. Ronda Rousey. <sighs> Let me tell you something, man. I got here, mm -hmm. and my rooms weren't booked. Oh, uh, what? It was it was a nightmare. Period? I, you know, I don't know if it was the UFC or if it was Cassandra. Okay. Who's so, Cassandra for those Cassandra's, that do Cassandra's the, my girl that works for me. Okay, Bob's like an fiance. assistant? Yes. Oh, okay. She, she's Bob's fiance. Bob Cook. My assistant, yes. And she's a fantastic employee. But the reality is... This was a bad mistake. It's okay. so bad that Rosendo even freaked out. Wow. And you know Rosendo's got to be the nicest guy in the world. Well, we've seen him get a little riled up. <laughs> do you know? He told me when he pushed Lesnar, I had better be behind Lesnar to help him <laughs> because in this moment he knew he was about to get his ass kicked. So he, so none of your team was booked? Or the he was flights were booked. The hotels weren't. For none of the guys? You roll like 30 deep. So, so I booked my own rooms. Oh. For me and my family. So oh. those were done. Oh, so you were the only one. <laughs> yes, was, yes. So I had rooms. <laughs> but like the rooms, the other rooms yeah. weren't, weren't ready. Oh, wow. I had, so what I did was I booked um, my rooms. And I've got a great friend named Dave Barry. Uh, he, he's, uh, he's a partner and owner of the Standard in East Village. Oh, yeah, yeah. So he gave me three rooms there. So I got all that done. Okay. So we had those guys set up. The, 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 the UFC's host hotel that 
I wasn't in charge of, Cassandra was, didn't get done. Okay. So, so in other words, you couldn't go to the pay per view. I could. It was too busy. I wanted to. I texted Rhonda because I was supposed to. Oh. I texted her, apologized, and I. I did she write you back? The champ, you did a great job last night, Rhonda. Phenomenal show. I got to watch, but I didn't Look get. Look at you looking at the camera. That's yeah. the kind of pro that you are. You knew which camera was the ISO on There's you. There's a red dot over there. Yeah, I know, but some people <laughs> just you know just ignore There's that. There's a red dot, dog. So did you watch? I watched. It. What do you think of this idea? All women. Do you think UFC could pull something off like that? Uh, An all women show. I think Ronda's a big enough star to carry a pay per view. Okay. Right. I think Cyborg's a big enough star to carry a pay per view. So yeah, I think the UFC could do it. Mm -hmm. I think the UFC could do it. I think you have to put. Honestly, I think maybe this one, UFC two thirty two. Yeah. Is the one that probably could have been done because you'd have put Cyborg Amanda as the big main yeah, event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you throw Joanna Valentina as the co main event. Yeah. And then you start filling that car with great women that fights. That could have been the one. Yeah, get John out of there. We could have called get it John Evolution. And out of there. Yeah, that would have been great. <laughs> what was it last night? Evolution. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I thought that was an original idea. <laughs> no, no, that was <laughs> It was, so I didn't make that Are up. Are you saying that to get John out of there, get that fight off the books? Well, I mean. Because he's the main event for that one. Is he? Yeah. <laughs> is he? Yeah. Damn, what do you think? About, what do you think about him uh, doing a press conference Friday before the weigh-ins? I think it's okay. You're okay with it? Yeah, I spoke to the organization about it. Oh, you bit. did? Yeah, yeah, we talked. About <laughs> what? <laughs> what did you talk about? I just don't want to fight. You know, like I just I got to worry about the black beast. You know. Okay. And uh, I think the black beast is uh, managed by uh, Kawa. Yeah, Malky. Too. So. Uh, I don't want to be in there worried about Jones, you know, and then go get beat up by the Black Beast on Saturday. Boy, that would be bad. Okay. Then so you just said, I don't want to see the guy. I don't want to see the guy. I don't want to see the guy. Let him do his thing, and then he can exit the building. You know? Okay. Like, Is he going to be there Saturday? I don't know. You don't know? I have no idea. That Where does Brock might be there? But he was there, he was there when I fought Rumble in, in Buffalo. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to do my thing regardless. If Brock's going to be there, I guess. Yeah? Yeah. Brock's coming to lay claim to, uh, but this time I'm not going to let him just push me. Right. Comes up there, right in the face. Slap him? Slap him. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what if it's Brock Jones sitting in the front? Who do you address afterwards? If it's Brock Jones sitting in the front, I say hi to Brock, throw my monster can at Jones. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding, dog. I don't know, man. I mean, I don't know. Jones has got to fight. The guy's got to so fight Gustafson, so that's not on my radar right now. So I got to worry about the beast. Will you talk about Brock? Will you call him out after again? I don't know. Okay. It just depends, right? Last time, you feel the moment. Yeah, la they, last time he was just sitting there, kind of smirking at me before, you know. So, I, and he's wearing that funny like, outfit. He, yeah, he's a big guy, man. I don't think they make like skinny suits for a guy big like Brock. He was bigger than I thought, though. Right. I'm not gonna lie, man. I like to talk a lot of shit about Brock, you know, but it's like oh, Brock's big, man. He's the real deal. But why does he it's have like to tuck in his pants into his cowboy boots like that? Did they get caught? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did they get caught? I don't want to say anything about the guy. You better be careful. Ass. Yeah. Because you would like to have Brock on here. That'd be nice. Right? I feel like he'll I just never think come at this here. point, with all the stuff that you've said in the five minutes yeah, leading yeah, up yeah. to I this know. thought. I know that train has you, left the yeah, station. Yeah, it's left the station. You literally I'm just good. buried it. Him, Rhonda, they're never talking to me. I don't know why. Rhonda? Yeah. She's a great girl. I know. Phenomenal She's mad at me for some reason. What did you do Can to Ronda? Can you fix that? I did nothing. I will reach out to Ronda and figure out what's going on. I think Habib's mad at me too. Habib. Yeah. No, Habib's the nicest guy on the I planet. know. I love Habib. Habib's not mad at you. I think so. That's the word around town. This Can you fix real. that for me? I can try, man, but God dang, you got me. Now I got like three I got three While sticks in the fire. Dana like, White, did you fix Dana White Rhonda, for me too? Ronda, Dana, Brock, and Habib. I mean, come on, it's four. We saw you in there, Peacemaker at 229. Yeah, that was, was incredible. Wow. I was proud of you that day. I was initially going to try to help him fight and then thought to myself, what am oh, I thinking? Really? You thought course, about that for a second? Because when you see your teammates fighting, you go to try to help. That's what happens. And I was like, what? I was like, let me try to calm these guys Defuse down a little bit. Yeah, diffuse it and see uh, what's going on. But yeah, it was, it was, it was. That was some crazy stuff, and it was fun. I feel like it's a mistake if they go back to the well on that one. Like, I feel like there's too much hate in the sport right now. You know, like, I, I feel like it's too volatile. It's just, it's just too combustible. Let's take a break from it. Give Tony his shot. Let's move on. Give Connor someone else to build him back up. Don't you agree? First off, I think for Connor, he goes a lot on confidence. Mm. So you let him fight somebody, rebuild that confidence. Yeah. Habib has a number of options. I don't think he, I mean, Tony's great. I like, I, I, I don't dislike Tony Ferguson at all. I think he's a phenomenal fighter. This dude's a beast. I think he's the tougher matchup for Habib. 
But I say do Habib versus George St. Pierre. That's the one. That's the fight. Man. That's the fight. It's big. Because matchup wise, Tony, tough. GSP, super tough. But the history. Yeah. And the matchup of a Habib versus GSP fight. At what weight? 165. You think that's okay, right? It doesn't have to be for a belt. It doesn't have to be for a belt. This is a big enough fight that it doesn't have to be for a title. Yeah, I love it. It does not need to be for a title. Make it a catchweight fight. I mean, the last time we've seen a main event without a belt was Diaz versus Silva. You don't no, need No, no, no. Diaz McGregor. Oh, yeah. Diaz and McGregor. No one cared. Nobody cared. No. When you got names like Habib George, it could be for anything. Let those guys fight. That's the fight. And uh, Does Habib win? Habib wins, but this is his closest fight ever. Really? Yeah, because you don't just control George St. Pierre. But I'm never. But you see, you're asking me a loaded question because sure. I'm never going to say Habib's going to well, lose. You said he'll lose to Floyd. Yeah, to Floyd because he's <laughs> boxing. Yeah, well, <laughs> just like somebody asked me earlier if I would fight Anthony Joshua or uh, yeah, what's the other guy's name? Deontay, Deontay Wilder, Wilder yeah. or Tyson Fury. Yeah, in a free fight, I could beat all those guys. Easy. But in a boxing match, psh, I have no chance. Right. They would kill me. It's just a singular style of fighting, and that's where Habib would go. But Habib's tough, and he would go twelve whole rounds, I believe. He doesn't get stopped. With Floyd. Floyd. Yeah, with Floyd, you, he doesn't get stopped. Do you think he, he finishes George? Or that's a tough, gritty five round. I think it's a five round decision. Yeah, man. I, you don't you don't you don't you don't you don't finish George St. Pierre. Unless you're Matt Serra. Wow. Like that Matt Serra is the man. I just talked He's to him the, a little bit ago. Oh, okay, you're on. But then, you know, you saw what happened in the You were on UFC Filter? That's my favorite yeah, show. Yeah, it's great. I love that show. It's awesome. Those guys are awesome. Um and so okay, so has Habib changed? Man, Habib didn't change since he won the belt. No? No, but now. I see him like with all these presidents. He and didn't change. Okay. Habib changed when he learned English. Oh. Because then he started talking all kinds of Yeah, shit. yeah, yeah. That's why we love him so much. There's a great video of you two of all like, the compilation <laughs> of you guys busting each other's balls. Yeah. Before he couldn't understand what I was saying, so it was like a one-way street. You know, I got to make fun of him. and him. What are you, DC, what, what? This was when I liked him the best. Yeah. Now he can give it as he takes it, you know. But no, he's great, man. He, I believe for a guy that's 27-0, and what, 11 and 0, 10 and 0 in the UFC? Mm -hmm. He's getting all that he deserves. Yeah. He should be meeting dignitaries. And honestly, uh, a lot of these countries that you're seeing them with, like the president and the, the prince and all that, I think these are Muslim countries. Mm. And he's got to be the, 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 the biggest yep. you know, Muslim star in the world. Yep. And I think he's getting treated as such. How's your hand? It's great. Look yeah. at that. Oh, Punch. You want to try one? No, I'm okay, but it looks good. Yeah, it looks good. It doesn't hurt at all? No, it doesn't hurt, man. The other day, I was really letting them go. Really? Oh, yeah. In sparring? Yeah, it was nice. How many times did you get to spar for this camp? I sparred 4, 8, 13. Damn. 18, 23, 28, 33, 30. I sparred 41 rounds for this, for this wow. fight. Wow. Yeah, I got 41 rounds in, so it's good. Wow, got a lot of rounds in. Is it still a little bit weird that you're actually here? You're, you're about to fight in New York. It's crazy because this happened Madison Square. It happened yeah. quick. It came so fast. Yeah. But honestly, man, like I got in shape. I told Bob this the other day. I go, Bob, it's a small miracle. I think we might have pulled this off. Got in shape and ready to fight in three weeks. It's crazy. Like How much I you feel weigh? great. Uh, about two forty five, two forty seven. Is that okay? So, yeah, it's you fine. You feel okay? Yeah, I feel great. And the hands okay. Hands no, okay. no concerns at all. No concerns, man. I feel good. I'm ready to go. Mentally, it takes a while to sort of like flip the that switch. switch, right? Is this enough time? I don't think it takes that long for me because I love to compete, right? So it's like the moment I get a name on the dotted line, I'm I'm I'm, I'm full systems go. And my team, they don't let me rest on my laurels, man. They're they're always after me to get going and do things the right way. It's crazy. Wow. So here you are. Essentially, it will be like what three, four weeks. It'll be four weeks, three and a half weeks of training. Your first time fighting at MSG, but you've wrestled once before there. 2003? Two? Three. You did it? I did it. Dude, I'm going to tell you something. Yes? I got to be honest with you, Yes. Doug. All right. I got so, nothing in front of me right here. No, I, and that's what's impressive. Yeah. But here's the deal. Okay. You got a lot of people mad at you. Yes, right? a lot. <laughs> I've, got a lot of, I've got a lot of peacemaking to do here yes. for you. But you're well researched. Thank you. And you know the game. Of course. And you're the best in the business. All right, well, look My guy, he's the best in the business. Which camera is that? It's, it's right there. Look, okay, right red there, camera, right there. there. Yeah, that's he's right. the best yeah. in the business. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, 2003, what do you remember about that? I remember walking from the hotel, going to the garden, and just people being 
everywhere and like feeling this rush of emotion every time I got close. And uh, I remember being like almost two years to the day after 9-11. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And just every time we walked out of that tunnel, USA, USA. And uh, it just, uh, it was just this tremendous opportunity to compete in front of our home countrymen and the world was here the world was what at was the, the tournament the world championships world of wrestling. championships damn it was the biggest tournament of the year the world came to the garden that night that that weekend and it was amazing and uh you know i i think uh like everybody watched hmm. everybody from the rest of the world watched because they support the u.s it's the it's the best thing in the world how'd you do I got fifth. Fifth. Yeah. What happened? I lost to this guy named Hadari. He was good. From man. where? Iran. He okay. always beat me. Really? I never lost to him. How many times? He beat me in the World Championships in 03. He beat me for the bronze medal in the Olympics. He beat me in the World Championships in 06. He was good. He was like a seven-time world medalist. You never medalist. beat him once? Nope. Never wow. Seven-time world medalist, two-time world champion, I think. He was what does really he do good. now? He was teaching wrestling the other day, and I watched a video on his Instagram, and I was like, boy, this dude is still good. Like, he can, bad memories come back to my mind from wrestling that dude. He was the man. Him and Gasoloff were the two I couldn't beat. And then Sanderson, those guys were just so good. But we're talking about three of the best wrestlers ever, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, like, these guys were just so, so good. But you know what's crazy? You mentioned those names, and I know Kale, you know, was sort of a thorn in your side throughout your, your amateur wrestling days. You've had a more successful career than all of them post wrestling, right? You have actually turned this like you stumbled a couple of times. You had the ups and downs in the Olympics, and all that. But it's incredible. Like if I would have told the 2003 Daniel Cormier that all this was going to happen to you, mm -mm. this is insane. It's look at this. It's crazy. Connor didn't. You know, there's a picture of Connor right over there <laughs> with the two belts. He didn't get this. The no. one thing I love about this fight is that they're about to take that belt away from you. But you were able to sneak in one where you are the double champ come Saturday mm -hmm. night. That's a big, to, that will that has never happened. I don't know if that ever happens. Again. It was a big deal. It's a big deal. That matters, you know. But in terms of career after wrestling, I don't. I don't necessarily know if mine has been more successful than theirs. I just think that it's a matter of what they want to do, right? Mm. Kale's a five-time NCAA national champion coach. Right. You know, Kale Sanderson has not hurt for anything. Um, Gonzalo is one of the members, national team coaches for Russia. They just won the Worlds. Uh, Hadari is one of the national team coaches. You know, these guys are all very successful. It's just that my career has played out more in the public eye. Right. So it seems as though it's better than what those guys have done. But, yeah, this is a big deal for me. I mean, I didn't even know if they were going to have two belts this morning. You know, Josh uh, walked out and he had two belts. I was like, man, this is – it's special, right, because – on Saturday night after I beat Derek Lewis, I will have defended the light heavyweight title on a number of occasions. I will have defended the heavyweight title and also done it as the double champion. So that iconic image of me in T-Mobile Arena with two belts, uh, I may get to do it again in Madison Square Garden. After the Olympics and, and before you really found MMA, was there a point where you thought, why are you looking at me like that? You're wondering where I'm going? I was looking at my coffee, oh, okay. actually. Uh, Get over yourself. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were like, be careful. <laughs> were you wondering, like, man, would I just be a perpetual loser? Yeah. Dude, I swear, like, after the Olympics in 08, I was like, man, what am I going to be remembered for? Like, really? Like, what? At the end of the day, with the disappointment of the 08 Olympics, I was like, what is wrestling going to think of Daniel Cormier when it's all over? If this is the end. Like, this is the way it ended? Like, God dang. I was like, that sucks. You know? In a, in a hospital, right? In a hospital in the Olympics in Beijing, not competing in the Olympics. We had no representative there at the Olympics in 08. We had no representative in my what weight do you class. Mean? We didn't have a guy oh, wrestle because I didn't wrestle. Wow. It was like a weight where we could have had another medal, no one wrestled. Wow. So I was just thinking to myself, like, what am I going to do now? I go back to Stillwater, Oklahoma, and... Everything seemed different. It just seemed like rest. My time in that sp the sport was done. You know, as much as Coach Smith loved me and, and everybody, the guys on the team, they all still were, were good to me and I was coaching. Everything just seemed different. It was like I was just kind of spinning the wheel. I was like, I needed to move on. Like, I needed something. And my coach, Jim Ravenack from Louisiana, a guy I've known my whole life, said, you need to get out of there. 
try something, do something new. You know, it's time for you to do something new. You have to start anew. And, and I think that's where um, I started to shed that, that, that idea that I would never truly ascend to the top of the mountain. When you say get out of there, you mean still water? Just thought I needed to change something up. Like okay. move from still water. Uh, if I was going to fight, go find somewhere to fight. Don't try to do it from still water. You know, like do something different. It's almost, it's almost like a reset. 2009 was like a reset. Do you remember the, the first time you thought I'm going to be a fighter? I do. I remember whenever uh, Dwayne Zink and my manager called me. We talk and he was going to fly me out to, uh, to L.A. I went to John Smith and I said, Coach, I go, I think I'm going to fight. And we sat outside of Galaga Arena talking, and he goes, "You're gonna be good at this. I mean, you're gonna be good at it. You might, you know, you're good at everything you do." He goes, "If you're gonna do it, then do it." And I was like, "Okay," because I was kind of like hanging. I was like, "Should I wrestle again this year to try to make it better, or what should I do?" And he's like, "If you're gonna do it, he goes, you got to do it." And I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna try it, Coach." I go, "I'll be back here once a month for for about a month." I go, "But then I'll be in California too doing." It. He goes, "Okay." Were you scared? I was very scared. I was terrified. I didn't know what was going to happen. I was, I was, I was starting a new career. Uh, my my first marriage was starting to kind of come to an end. There was a lot of changes going on in my life at at the same time, and none of them were good. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like you're going divorce time. You didn't wrestle in the Olympics. Like nothing good is really happening. And you're just about to go out on the limb and try something completely new. And that was uh, moving to San Jose. And and financially, how were you doing? Bad. I had no money. Nothing. I lived on Bob's floor. Wow. For a year. He had a mattress on the floor in his house. I played video games and ate Carl's Jr. Wow. All the time. <laughs> they would come in like Cassandra would come into the room like, clean this room up. I was like, what's dirty? But like Carl's Jr. bags on the floor french fries like it was bad yeah. i just didn't know what i wanted for my life and then um uh and honestly i was content just living like that bar on their car i put like twenty thousand miles on bob's car in like a year wow i was content on living like that and then i met selena in 2010 and uh your wife my wife yeah we uh how'd you meet her i was out in fresno with my managers and stuff and, and, and saw her and started talking to her. We started talking, talking, talking. Uh, eventually, she started dating me. It's like three months before we started actually dating. But after we started dating, we got pregnant for our kid, Daniel. And then I understood what I was supposed to do. So she came with me to Vegas for the Ultimate Fighter with Koscheck. And then we moved back to San Jose. We were on our own from then. What do you mean I understood what I was supposed to do? Like I knew that it was the right move. That's why I moved to San Jose. Okay. That was the change Coach Ravenek spoke of. Getting out of Stillwater, starting a new life, and uh, trying to build something for myself and her and the family that we were going to have. Getting punched in the face, all that, how did you take to it early on? Well, it's different when you're getting punched by Cain Velasquez. Right. Right? When and that he's was already the case, on, right? That was the guy. I was getting beat up by Cain and Luke all the time. I took my licks. So now when these guys come into the gym and they're getting beat up by us, I'm like... Guys, I was you. I remember this. I was the guy that got beat up. And uh, it was just different. But they said, just take him down, DC. I was like, first off, I know Kane. Because Kane used to be at the Olympic training center when he was in college. And I was like, this dude can wrestle a little bit. And then he started kicking me and punching me. Two minutes after I got in there, I was rolling under the bottom rope trying to get my ass out of there. It was crazy. Wow. It was great. And, 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 and so was there any point... In the early days, you were like, eh, this isn't really for me. Did Not you ever really. call John Smith? No? The problem was, the problem was, like, when I went, I went for the first, like, half of 2000, and last half of 2009, where I would go back and forth. Beginning of 2010, I was like, this is it. I need to be here full time. And then I just moved. Hmm. I was like, I didn't go back to Stillwater anymore. Like, I haven't been back to Stillwater since August of, two no. I fought there once, but the last time I went back to my house in Oklahoma was August of 2010. Really? Yeah, because I was like, it's it's over. Like, I know now where I need to be. It's California. You have no interest in them? Like, usually alumni comes back. They, they ask they, me a lot. You're, they ask me a lot. I I haven't been able to because I'm so busy. When okay. I'm not fighting, I'm doing the TV or the Gilroy yeah. wrestling team or my youth wrestling team. It's like, I want to. But Daniel's at an age now where all the... Your son. 
My son Daniel, yeah. yeah. All the props are not enough, right? So like him seeing my pumpkin with the Oklahoma State logo as an indicator, like he looks, all he sees is OSU. Him, his t-shirts and sweat tops all say cowboy wrestling. You know, it's like those were good to build the base for him going, well, what is this OSU that's always around me? Uh. And to say, well, Daniel, where do you want to go to college at? And he goes, Oklahoma State. Those were good. As a foundation for for like uh, uh, what's it, what's it when you mess with the brain, like hypnotizing them, yeah, like right. Yeah. I was trying to build that yeah. love for Oklahoma State as a young kid. Yeah. Now I need to show him as he gets older. So now it's time to take him back to a football game and then take him to some wrestling matches. What do you want him to be, and what do you think he'll be, your son? I've seen some clips you post of him football yeah. wrestling. He looks like a prodigy child, <laughs> right? It's in his DNA clearly. <laughs> I want him to just be Daniel. Like, whatever he chooses. Do you Mark think he Eden, follows you? I, I don't... I hope he doesn't. Okay. I would prefer him not to fight, you know, but he did a thing on TV the other day. He was Incredible. really good at that. Yeah. So, hopefully he does TV. Pointing at the camera and so, everything. Yeah, he's he got was like... swag. He's got... You know, it's like, he's so comfortable in front of a camera. Hopefully he chooses communications as his major. And then he just does this career from the start. Hopefully I'm in TV long enough to present him some opportunities when he graduates to where he doesn't have to start. Like at the lowest level, um, my daughter though is the one that I think will be just through the roof in terms of an athlete. Athlete, really? Yeah, she's gymnastics. Crazy. She's really good at gymnastics, softball, everything. She does everything. She wow. does everything well. Yeah, she's crazy. It's the best. LeBron James said recently that he regrets calling his son LeBron Junior. Do you understand where he's coming from? Your son's do. name is Daniel Cormier Jr., right? Yeah, the second. I, I think I think that I think a little bit of 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 what he's talking about is gonna be present in the wrestling community. Mm. Because even when he wrestles now, which isn't very much, he's just starting. And he doesn't win all the time. He doesn't always do well, but he's a fighter. So last week he wrestled two really good kids and lost. But these kids were pinning everybody, but they didn't pin Daniel. They beat him 6'1", 6'2", 6, you know, 7'2". And when I look at him, I see me as a little 11-year-old kid just getting throttled, but never being okay with getting pinned. And But I see the reactions from the other coaches are the kids. It's almost like they feel like they're beating me. Yeah. And I think when they see his name on the bracket, he's always going to have to deal with that. Yeah. And I think that... Part of it kind of sucks. But I believe that him and all the other kids that are named after their dads that are, are public figures, if they embrace it, if they embrace that expectation that comes with the name that their parents gave them, it will only drive them to be better. Because all I want is for him to be better at everything than I was. So if he's a football player like me, I want him to be a better football player. If he's a wrestler, be better. I just want my kids to be better than me. And that's why I try to do what I do in everything to try to provide a better way for them to accomplish those things. They're everything, man. Like, people people love their children. And, and we all do. But it's, it's just, when you're from where I'm from and seeing the things that I've seen and have been through the things that I've been through, there's nobody, there's no love for your children like I have. I mean, I love my kids. I would do anything for them, and, and I just want them to be able to do whatever they want in life. So that's why I fight, do everything else. Do you think you'll have more? Or you guys, you guys, We're done. You're done? Yeah, Selena's done. I'm done. We're, we don't want any more kids. You have Our two kids, now, obviously. We have two, Marquita yeah. and Daniel, and they fight. <laughs> They're like six and seven, Irish twins, 13 months apart, right? and they get after each other. I remember when you had Daniel, it was around the time that you fought Jeff Munson. Yes. Right? I had little Daniel right before then, 2011. So she wasn't born. And you know, I must say, I, I've never told you this, but one of the biggest regrets of my career was I, f I was so mad at myself, so mad. In Dallas, I saw you, yeah. you did a scrum. I think it's the first time I actually ever spoke to you in person. Uh -huh. And uh, you said that you just had your son. And I, and I asked you if it was your first one, and I felt so bad about that because yeah. of what happened to your daughter. daughter I, it, yeah. it was, I went to my room that night. I was so mad. I actually thought I was going to go up. I was like, eh, maybe he didn't hear me. And so I apologized for that because that killed me inside because I knew about your story. I knew yeah. about it very well. You said research and everything. And so I want to apologize for that. Oh, it's okay, man. You know, a lot of times people uh, see what's there 
you know, they don't recall the memories. But I have a few memories of my daughter, Kaden. But I try to call back on them. You, you know, tell your kids about her? I just did last year. What, yeah. What did you tell them? So my brother's ex-wife, she makes like pictures and photos. And she made this photo of me holding my daughter when I was a young guy. And uh, the kids were like, what is that? And I was like, hey, that's your sister. You know, like. I they was didn't like, know? No, I hadn't told them. Wow. Just because I, I didn't want them to. I didn't know how to answer the follow up questions. Right. Like I didn't know how to answer everything else, especially from a five year old and a four year old. Like they won't comprehend or understand. I think now my kids are at an age where they kind of understand life and death. So I was able to explain to them that they had a sister that passed away when she was very young. And that if uh, if she was here today, she'd be 15. Wow. And they were like, wow, we would have had a 15 year old sister. And it's it's it's. It felt good to finally talk to him about it. Obviously, Selena knew. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Just having to explain that and have that conversation with two young kids was was tough. And uh, I just wanted to wait to the right time before I did it. So. And you told them the story. Yes, I've told wow. them everything. They wow. know now about their. How, how hard was that for you? It was hard. I try not to. I, I mean, I, I want to honor her memory in everything I do, as I've always said. But when you think back to it, it is still difficult. It's not fun to think about that, you know, because I've had to see things that I never wanted to see, you know, like I, when we lost our daughter, you know, obviously you go through the, uh, to, to the lawyer and you go to the, uh, uh, because it was like a semi truck hit him or something. And right away, lawyers are calling you to, to, to try and make money and all this other stuff. Oh. So, uh, when you go into the lawyers, man, like they'll be doing stuff and showing you stuff and. I've seen some things, man, that I've never wanted to see or have to see, like just going through like photos and like of the the, the scene and how bad the car was and just seeing like her car seat and then stuff like that. It's horrible. Like mm. these are things that are burned into my memory for the rest of my life and it sucks, you know? And so when I when I talk about it, it's very important because... Uh, my kids and people need to know the things that I've been through, but it, it, it still sucks. Like I've had to see some shit that I wish I never had to see in my life. That's the thing about you. Someone was actually asking me a couple of days ago, like, why do you always talk about DC so, so much? Why do you always give him so much props? Why are you always so high on DC? And I was like, do you know what this man has been through? Like everyone's been through stuff, but you have been through, I mean, your father mm -hmm. getting murdered on, on Thanksgiving, your daughter, the Olympics, the embarrassment, you know, having no money, all that stuff. And then to get to this, you know what I mean? It's it's very rare to come through all that. You could come through all that and be successful. But to come through all that and be arguably the greatest ever at what you do, that blows my mind. And the thing is, and, and you can't possibly answer this, but this is why I have so much respect for you, the humility that you have. The fact that you coach high school wrestling kids or even younger than that, right? Yeah. Those kids in that commercial that, that aired on Saturday night, like those are actually your My students. Yeah. Those are your, that's not a fake thing. I talk to you all the time on the phone. You're there. I hear them in the background. Then you have to go. <laughs> you have to, like that's, that's absurd. Like, could you imagine a superstar in another sport doing that? No, it doesn't happen. How is this possible? How, how are you able to be this successful, this great? And, and I know it sounds like I'm kissing your ass, but I'm genuinely interested in how you keep that humility. Well, and, and you're just a regular guy. You're the most egoless superstar <laughs> that I've ever met. It's unbelievable. I, even the way you put over, sorry for interrupting, but even the way you put over the fighters as a, as a, as a commentator is an indication of how ego free you are you know what i mean because yeah. if you have an ego you can't put over an anthony smith or someone like that but you do it consistently every time you're on the mic how is that possible i just think that i understand what coach lotif meant to me my my first wrestling coach right just someone that cares sometimes like a kid just needs somebody that cares and they'll go through walls for you and uh i love wrestling man that sport really did change and save my life. Like, I really want to give back what I got from that sport. So I coach high school. I mean, and these kids work so hard. They work so hard. Little kids, big kids. Sometimes my wife asks me, she goes, how are you? You don't have time for this. Hmm. Like, I'll go to high school practice from 3, 3.30 to 5. Then I'll start the kids from 5.30 to 7. And she's like, you don't have 
three and a half hours to do wrestling. How? I go, because I just love it. I go, I love wrestling. I go, honestly, I like doing TV and everything. I do. But I love wrestling. Right? And if wrestling made paid enough, I would probably just coach wrestling. But it doesn't pay enough. I can't do it because it doesn't make sense financially. I like my other jobs. I really do enjoy doing TV and everything. But I just love being around wrestling. And I love what the improvements I can see in these kids. Like, we went to this tournament in Las Vegas a couple of weeks with my high school team and my kids. We had 10 champions. I mean, my high school team, the Gilroy High School team, they're ranked number 10 in the country mm. as a team. My little kids team is ranked number 11, and we haven't even added all the new kids to the list. Once we do that, we'll be in the top 10. So it's like these teams are so successful, and it's not me. It's not Kyle Crutchmer or Deron Wynn or Sean Bunch. It's... It's Travis Grace and Bryce Luna pushing each other. It's little Daniel and Joey Telez and Junior Casoilo. These guys, it's like the little boys and their ability to work together to attain something is what makes them great. And I love watching it. That's why AKA is so special, right? I love being part of the American Kickboxing Academy because of that same thing that I see in Daniel and JoJo is what I see in me and Kane. The same thing I see in Habib and Islam is the same thing I see in Bryce and uh, Scotty. Same thing I see in Travis and, and Daniel, you know, Zapata. It's like you have to have that person that pushes you. And I can watch my career play back through all these little kids. And then in terms of putting guys over, it's like they deserve it, man. These guys fight hard. They train hard. They make all the same sacrifices that I do. So why wouldn't I show them respect in that sense? It's my job, man. I'm supposed to talk about these guys fighting, and I say only truths. Anthony Smith is a tough fighter, and Volkan Ozdemir is a tough fighter. It's the way it is. I mean, I don't even uh, not give Jones his props. I give him props in a lot of different areas, and it's because of the truth. I just talk the truth, honestly. Yeah. You said in that promo, oh, I'm going to defend my belt against these guys, but everyone's, like, confused. How are you going to do all this? You know in what I mean? Months. Yeah. How's this gonna happen? Got big dreams, dog. <laughs> you know, I'm in New York. You're really gonna fight Anthony Smith? No, no. <laughs> I wish he well, had to get carried out of the octagon yeah. after three rounds. That's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. If you get that tired, you are in. You you have no chance against me. You cannot get that tired. And honestly, he fights Jones and he gets that tired. He's in trouble, man. You cannot get that tired. That's. If I have any advice for Anthony Smith going forward, Jones, Gustafson, myself, you got to be able to push the cardio because we're going to be pushing the whole time. I mean, Alexander Gustafson made me work for 25 minutes. John Jones made me work for 25 minutes and 15 minutes of the last fight. You cannot be able to go 10 minutes, 12 minutes and get that tired. You just can't. He's got to really get himself... Uh, Get used to are better at going that long fight because, dude, people talk about 205, but when you get to the top of the division, they are as good as anyone in the entire world, regardless of weight class. And so you better be ready because, you know, he fought well against Vulcan, but that type of performance would not get it done against any of us. You know what I'm really happy about? When when I saw you in Buffalo, and we just have a couple of minutes left here with Daniel Cormier. I appreciate it. Tyler Minden is getting worked up in the back there because he wants his time to shine. So okay. I'm going to get to Tyler in a second. But I remember in Buffalo, you were fighting uh, Anthony Johnson. I took a picture of you, and I posted on Instagram, most underappreciated champion in UFC history. And I got so much hate for that. Underappreciated my ass, fake champion, all that stuff and more. Now I feel like that's gone. <laughs> and I feel like that second belt erased all of that. And it seems, and I don't know if you feel this, everyone's just so happy for you, right? Yeah. Like when you beat Stipe, people love Stipe, but they were just so happy for you, for what you represent, that you got the other belt and the other division that's not tied to Jones. Now it almost feels like a victory lap tour for you as yeah. you're sort of, do you get? Do you feel that love? Do you feel a difference now? I do. In the way the fans <laughs> treat you and stuff? I, I honestly think, Ariel, that that changed in Anaheim when I lost. Mm. I truly believe that changed in Anaheim when I lost because I sat there and, I was crying. I wish I would have made it back to the back like the first time. Because yeah, yeah. I did cry the first time too. But this time I just couldn't make it back to the back. I was so sad. But um, then after he tested positive, people go, man, this dude was crying a month ago in the octagon. And 
how dare you not give him a fair shake, right? Like, this is crazy. Like, we applauded you. How could you not give this guy a fair shake? Look at how much it means to him. And for it to be tied in controversy again, it's like, how dare you? And when they said, how dare you, they thought, well, let's take a look at the guy that is putting so much into this that he can't control his emotions when he loses. Mm. Let's look at the guy that's been like this the whole time, right? It's been going up and then steady. Let's take a look at the guy that seems to represent what we think sports should represent. And I think when people did that, it became more uh, okay to, to cheer for me. And I felt it in Boston and I felt it in July. But you're right, you know, having the second belt, something completely outside of Jones is a... Uh, it's just tremendous. And if I can win these last two heavyweight fights to retire as a undefeated UFC heavyweight champion with two defenses, I mean, I talk about being one of the greatest fighters of all time or, or the greatest fighter of all time. Uh, when you say, well, this guy might be one of the best light heavyweights of all time. Obviously, he lost to Jones twice, so let's put him at number two. But then I become an undefeated heavyweight champion, and then you got to go <laughs> Well, we might need to start considering this guy one of the greatest heavyweights of all time when you look at his resume. How do you not have me in that conversation? It just doesn't make sense. And anyone that doesn't uh, think that is just uh, uh, stupid. <laughs> what stupid. a fun time in our sport. You're fighting at MSG. You're fighting against Derek Lewis, which is just a fun fight after yeah. like the nastiness of 229. Yeah. Trades are happening in our sport. Trades. Your teammate... Uh, in the Olympics, right? Ben Askren, ben Askren yeah. goes over Trades. to the UFC. DJ, your boy, your friends with DJ, over to one. Who won that trade? We only have a minute, but who won that trade? I could do a, I could do 30 minutes probably with you on that trade. Who I won? Think, uh, I think uh, anytime you get Demetrius Johnson, yeah. 10 title defenses, you win the trade. But wow. the UFC gets Ben Askren and the opportunities and the, the potential matchups that he brings. Calling everyone out. I, I, say, I say it's a wash, honestly. Just because of what... I think it's easier to gauge it and weigh how important Astro is going to be after we see him in the octagon. Okay. If he's successful, then it's a wash. Right. But if not, you know, then then uh, one FC won the trade. It's so amazing talking to you here and even just looking at you and your demeanor because you've only been in studio once before, and that was part of the Vulcan at fight. Yep. You're a completely different person. And I caught you at the end of uh, a media day that time. We sort of snuck in there, and, and I yeah. appreciated that. But here, it's the middle of the day, fine. But your demeanor is much different. Your energy is different. You were a little bit like ornery on that Monday. You're a different guy, right? On the Monday of a heavyweight fight as yeah. opposed to a Monday of a light heavyweight fight. Much different. You I've just... already had two big meals. Like, <laughs> big meals. Like, I didn't, I didn't cut no corners. Let yeah, me tell you that. We're you're not happy. Cutting any Who needs yeah. that? It's a good life. There's. I would only go back to 205 to fight against Jones. Right. It's the only person I would go back down for. Gustafson wins this fight. 205 means nothing to me anymore. The only guy who will go down to fight is Jones. What a pleasure. My man. What a pleasure. Boy, I tell you, this is TV magic. This is something, right? I mean, it is really magic. Yeah, I know, right? It, it just magic. flies back. It flies How flies, long was this? An hour. I was in here for an hour. Yes, yes. Give or take a minute or two. But yes, no it's 258. Way. It's 258. I was in here for an hour. Yeah. Josh said, I got to be hard out 3 o'clock. Look at the pro that I am. There's no clock. I look. Are at my... you serious, Josh? Yeah. It's been an hour? It's been an hour. It's been good? Yeah. Josh, has it been good? Best one of the day, Josh? Best one of the day. My man. Josh, that's best one of the day. My man. How about that? I now, we do it. this thing over here. We're doing something for charity here. All the people who visit us in studio, you see some big names over there. Michaela Mayer, a uh, fellow Olympian. You know Michaela Mayer? I do. Uh, she signed a Chael, Mitrion. We've got Eddie Alvarez. Anyhow, can you sign our banner before you go? This is our ESPN banner. Is that okay, or is that does that put you in an awkward spot? You know, man, honestly, yeah, I'll do a lot of things. <laughs> okay, all right, fair <laughs> enough. Signing that banner is not one of them. Wow! <laughs> I'm just kidding, dog. I'm wow. going to sign the banner. Of course I'm going to sign the banner. I always feel guilty when I ask you to be on the show. You've been on this show, the new era of the show, more than anyone. I think it's your fifth appearance. <laughs> but I'm going to I'm gonna ask you for six after you win on, on Saturday. Six, you come back for the traditional if Monday. If I win, yes, I come after. And then I'll leave you alone for a long time. Is it, is it a deal? I'll be back. Okay. I'll be back on Monday uh, if I win the fight. When I win the fight on Saturday, right, right. because I am. Why'd you pause there for a second? Because I almost said if I win the fight, yeah, trying okay. to be humble. But right, the reality right. is I'm winning the fight on Saturday. Prediction? I'm, prediction, I win my third round submission. Oh, we are third naked? 
Derek, look, man, I don't want to say this because, like, this whole thing with Stipe last time, remember I was like, oh, he drops his hand out of the clinch and it works. Derek Lewis has a habit of just bench pressing guys off of him. Mm. And if he does that against me, then I'm going to take his arm with me. So he better not bench press me off of the top. I like it. I'll arm Arm bar. bar. Yeah. Ronda Rousey style. Yes. (laughs) MSG this Saturday, November 3rd, Daniel Cormier defending his heavyweight title against Derek Lewis. Tickets still available? Yes. Yes. All right. Tickets are available. But very few limited. Very, very few. Because yes. listen, once Derek and I got announced at the top of the bill, ticket sales went up. That's what so I heard. There's a little bit of value in the Cormier brand. I oh, guess. and are we going trick or treating on Wednesday with the kids? I am not going me and you, but are, are the I'm family not going, going trick or treating with you. No, but no, I'm but going with my family. Fam- okay, yeah. You don't okay, I was about to say that. I'm not going trick or treating. No, no, I don't mean we. I meant like the Cormier. Okay, I thought you were asking me on a date. I was like, no, absolutely not. In Times Square, you guys gonna go? I do they trick or treat? Times Square. It's a whole different experience here in New York. Like you go into businesses, you don't go into homes. So, yes. Jimmy Stewart, yes. is one of my friends who has a real nice high rise apartment. Yeah, you said go. That we can you do go it in, in his there. apartment. But it's also fun to go on the streets because, like, let you know. me tell you something, man. All right. Again, like my kids, I love my kids, and I'm I'm so scared of big cities. No, nah, you'll and be those fine. Big you'll things be fine. like that. Halloween in New I York is like fun. It. It's different than the suburbs where you're from, but it's fun. It's fun for one time for your kids. The are suburbs like where I'm from. Well, I mean, where you're you from the now. suburbs too. Where you live now. Let's not pretend know. like you're in the mean streets. This is you're a, in the suburbs. This is this is. Hey, a, have you gotten over that buyer's remorse? No. It's three years later. It's three years later. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I should have bought this. Go sign that. My guy, if you can. My guy. I there he is, it, Daniel Cormier. Awesome. Look at these belts. Wow, what a pleasure. Let me just hold this one more time. One day I'm gonna. The champ. Win. The champ is gone. Rosendo Sanchez is here. What's up, Rosendo? Look at this guy over there. Yeah, you can walk in, Rosendo. No. <laughs> Hey, I just want you guys to know Rosendo's hair is really spiky. Yeah, Rosendo's looking good over there. We got a whole crew spiky. here. It's generally um, not that spiky. This is my man Jake over here fixing the microphone. Look, he could probably <laughs> bench press like. <laughs> <laughs> like I have this crazy desire to crack his back. Just like I take it off. <laughs> yeah, uh, so we got to. Oh, right here, pen, uh, down below. Just bend down right over there, DC. This is great television here. You could pick gold, you could pick whatever you want. All right. Always. Better in black. Here he comes, Daniel Cormier, signing the infamous Fox banner that we have here in the studio. Don't tell anyone. Hey, calm down, dude. The one and only, the champ champ, the double champ in the house. Look at those Jordans that you're wearing. Wow, those are nice. I appreciate it. Thank you, as always, for coming. My man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Much love. Much love. Good luck on Saturday. We'll see you later on in the week. Okay, DC? Rosendo, peace out. Mr. Larios, take care, everyone. All the best to you. Wow. What a pleasure that was. Daniel Cormier in the house, the double champ. How much fun was that, right? I mean, what an honor.